Let's process a simple problem. Through the input device, we will enter two numbers to be added, 523 and 611. But for the moment, we will consider only four components in the system and disregard the control section and the communications network. Let us follow the machine sequence of operations in accomplishing this simple addition. The first step is to read the number 523 into memory. Then read 611 into memory. Then send 523 to arithmetic and logic. Then add 611 to 523. Then store the result of this addition in memory. Finally, write the result on the output medium. At electronic speed, thousands of these steps are accomplished per second. Now let us go through the same problem in somewhat greater detail. Memory is divided into specific locations. The allocation of these locations is the task of the programmer who develops the sequence of machine instructions. Each location is identified by a number called an address. This address is analogous to a house address, while the storage location is analogous to the house itself. Instead of using complete words for machine operations, as we see here, each system uses its own set of abbreviations. We should also note that by definition, an instruction always includes an operation and an address. Thus, for our present example, the first operation, which is read the first number into memory, will appear as RD. In addition, the complete instruction will include the memory address, which the programmer has designated for the storage of this number. In this case, location 109. To the electronic circuitry, read 109 means read the next number from the input into memory location 109. The next instruction would be read 101. The third instruction would be send 109, which means send the number in memory location 109 to the arithmetic and logic section. The next instruction would be add 101, which means add the number from memory location 101 to the number stored in the arithmetic and logic section. The next instruction would be store 114, which means store the result in memory location 114. The final instruction would appear as write 114, which takes the sum from memory location 114 and writes it on the output medium. Now let us look at the function of the control section in processing our problem. Before the processing begins, the sequence of instructions must be developed. Through an input device, the instructions are loaded into memory. Note that in this case, the programmer allocated locations 115 through 120 to store the instructions. Memory location 114 is reserved for storage of results. From memory, the instructions move automatically and in sequence into the control section. 
the control section interprets the instruction and sets up the proper electronic circuits to execute the instruction read 109. The control section now interprets the next instruction, read 101. And continues through all the instructions, send 109. Add 101. Store 114. Write 114. The control section may be compared to a quarterback. It calls the plays, but it calls them in electronic language using the coded abbreviations that the system is keyed to obey. Transfer instructions are used to test for equality by electronically comparing the magnitudes of designated numbers. A similar test is made for inequality. As a result of these comparison tests, the control section can automatically shift about within the sequence of instructions. Examples of transfer instructions used to test for the possible conditions are transfer high for x greater than y. Transfer equal for x equal to y. And transfer low for x less than y. 